so you're going to see two videos here, one about NMR of chiral compounds, one about NMR of cyclic molecules. And this is not to imply in these videos you're actually expected to be able to know how to do those types of NMR. Actually quite the opposite. So in these videos we're going to talk about why we practically can't do NMR with cyclic and chiral molecules, at least in terms of a classroom setting. So we'll start out with the cyclic ones. And to understand the cyclic, we need to get to a bit of a, bit of a level of theory that's kind of above what we would talk about in a organic chemistry course, at least organic one, organic two. So the J coupling constant, there is actually an equation for it. And it goes that the J coupling constant between two hydrogens is A cosine squared phi plus B cosine of phi plus C. So there are three terms here. These three terms are empirical, meaning that you really can't derive them from theory. You actually, it's so much more practical for you to measure them. But phi here is going to be the dihedral angle. So if we have a molecule, let's say we have propane, and, or I'm sorry, butane, and we just focus on this hydrogen here and how it J couples with these two hydrogens, as drawn, it looks like there are different coupling constants because these both have different dihedral angles. But because we have this conformational rotation, because we can rotate along this single bond, what ends up happening is that our J coupling constant here actually ends up being the average over all the dihedral angles. So for linear and branched alkanes, this conformational rotation, this free, the ability of the molecule to rotate around, this is going to give us an average J coupling constant for adjacent hydrogen. So these two hydrogens, even though individually should be giving a different J coupling constant because they have a different angle relative to the hydrogen that we're looking at, because of this rotation, they end up averaging and giving up the same. What happens when we go to um, uh, cyclic molecules? Well, when we go to a cyclic molecule, we don't get this conformational rotation anymore. And because we don't get conformational rotation anymore, the J coupling constant between this hydrogen and this hydrogen and this hydrogen and this hydrogen right here are different because they have different dihedral angles. So we will end up getting coupling. And instead of seeing what we'd expect from a tree diagram where we get the one split that breaks into two splits, so let's call this hydrogen A and hydrogen B, we get the split due to A and the split due to B, we will actually get one split due to A and different splits due to B. So we have two and we will end up with basically what ends up being a quartet. Now, it gets even more complicated than this because before not only was our um, signal intensity dependent, okay, it's more complicated because A, B, and C now here are also different because on average these are experiencing the magnetic fields differently because they're on opposite sides of the ring. So just this very simple example of looking at cyclohexane with one hydrogen, we don't have anything here, we can just call it some dummy atom A that doesn't give J coupling. Just to these two alone, we start seeing coupling that looks different than what we'd expect if we just had the analog where they could rotate. So when it comes to um, NMR of cyclic compounds, we're typically only going to stick to very simple molecules. And the reason we're going to stick to just very simple molecules is that it becomes nigh impossible for you to really start working this out by hand. The only thing I would sit back and say that you would be able to predict, even if you were an expert, is to say that you're going to get a multiplet off of that hydrogen because you're getting different signals from different dihedral angles. But as far as how those splits will turn out, like will you get a quartet, a doublet, like you're not going to be able to predict that. So in terms of NMR cycle molecules for organic one, organic two, we're going to kind of stay away from them except when we start getting to things like benzene. And things like benzene, we're going to talk kind of more like based off experimental evidence, which you expect to see.